cool. Okay, that's fine. Um, so like I said, we are going to talk about date handling today. How do we handle dates in um in uh, databases? How do we handle dates? And it's going to be a little bit more interactive than our previous lessons. So if you would all just open your database applications, database management applications, it would be great. Now there are five main um, date handling techniques in database, how we handle dates. Let me share a screen. Okay, let me let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're going to talk about date handling. So like I said, there are five main types. Or five main ways of handling dates. The first one is called, who knows the first one? Who has dealt with dates before in database? All right, the first one is called get date. The second one is date add. The third one is date diff. Number four is date part. And number five is date name. These are the four main types of handling dates. So let's start with the first one, which I would all want us all to participate in. So if you have opened your data, uh, your SQL Server Management Studio, just go to your terminal, And then just one. So if you just type get dates, select get dates. Can we all do that, please? Who has done it? Can we run it? Yes, I've done it. My, my app is not allowing me to do anything. 
It should allow you. Can I, can I share my screen? You want to share your screen? Yes. Sir. Okay, cool. Let me stop sharing. Yes, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, click on new query. You haven't opened a page anything yet. So click on new query. Up, 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 up. Yep, click on that. Oh, yep. thank you. Thank you. So come down a bit so that the first line would not um, get cut off. The, yeah. So just type select. Space. Get date. No, don't leave space in between get and date together. Get date. And then... Um, Brackets. Right. Okay. Pardon? Put the brackets in. Open and close bracket. No, don't leave space. Okay. Okay, now execute. Click. No, no, no. Click on execute. Up, up. Clear that place. Clear what you've just written. Yeah. Go up. Okay, so what result do you see? Um, the year, month, and the day. And what date is that? Today, 17th of And November. what time is that? 9, 18. So that is the date. In fact, so let me rather name this date and time handling. It's actually date and time handling. So that is today's date, exactly the 17th of November 2023. And the time that this was run was um, 9, 9 o'clock, 18 minutes, 44 seconds, 613 milliseconds. So this here, get date, gives you the date and time that the request is made. The date and the exact time. So here we have today's date. Anytime you run a get date, uh, you execute get date, you will get the date for that day and the time that the query was executed. So that is all for number one. <clears throat> okay, Can let's go sharing? to the pardon. Can I stop sharing. Oh yeah, you can stop sharing okay. if you want to. Yes. You can stop sharing. Okay, let me go back. Where is my own? Okay, let me go back. Where's my? Right, so that is number one, get date. Um, we can apply this to, if we have a database manage, a, a, a database um, system, we can actually apply this to databases, but just so that you have an idea. So for example, if I have a database and I want to find, um, I want to find all employees who started today. Assuming I want to, assuming we've just employed a number of employees into the company today. And I want to find employees who started today. How do we get that? Do, do you get, do you kind of get where, where I'm coming from? 
So I don't think we have any, I'm not sure whether your database would have that. Even if it does, I'm not sure it is up to date for today. So if we run this query on that basis, it's not going to work. This query is more like today, 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 right? So it's not going to work, but let's, let's just see how a statement using this kind of query would look like. So if you want to use this, for example, let's say from an employee table. So what do we do? Select all. Let's say we want to select everything from employees. Right? Where... Employees who started today. So start date, where start date is equal to get date. Do we get that? So this will give us, though we, we, we wouldn't have, I'm not sure anybody would, I don't have the, this a, 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 a database that is this current. So I wouldn't be able to run this for it to run. If I run this, it wouldn't run actually, because there's nothing like that. In much the same way, we can still use this query to find, assuming we have employed people but we don't want them to start yet. We want them to start sometime later, sometime in the future. What comparison operator do we use? Greater than get date. So this is where we, we want Sorry, we want um employ we are looking for employees that we have tentatively employed, but who have not started yet and are to start in future. For example, if you've employed somebody, you want them to start on Monday. You can use this query to get so long as you've input their data, their details into your database with their start date, you can easily harvest this this uh, information is that making sense yes good 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 so now let's go to number two dates add like the name implies who can tell me what it would do Who can tell us what it would do? Just make a guess. Make a don't worry. Don't don't be afraid to talk. It's best to talk and then get it wrong than to keep quiet and then. Uh, no. It adds um date. Yeah, it adds it adds onto a given date. It adds onto a given date. So if, for example, I want to add two days onto today's date. Or I want to add 100 days onto today's date. I want to know the date, for example, 100 days from today. I want to know the day, the date, 1,000 days from today. I can find it. How do I do that? <clears throat> Right, so date add requires three arguments. Date add requires three arguments. Three arguments.
And these arguments are interval, interval, increment, increments and expression. We'll see how these come into play. So you see, in all of these, I'm not using any, I don't need to use any database to, to for us to, today we, we would hardly, we would use a database at some point, but it's just not gonna be much. So it's, it's a level, it's more like a level playing field today. So the, it requires three arguments. That is date add. So what? how does this operate? How, how does it work? Let's just go back to the way we did get date. Select date add. Date add. We want to add A day. Let's assume we want to add a day. That's that is that is the interval, right? The you see immediately you start writing. It gives you. It prompts you. The increment is an integer. Increment int. The increment is an integer. So how many days do you want to add on to? How many days? Since we are working in days, we're looking for days. How many days do you want to add? Let's assume we want to add 20 days. 20 days from today, what would the dates be? 20. Expression from today, get date. You know, today's date is get date in a database. Today's date is get date. Right? So if we run this, what do we get? Can you all run this on your terminals? Can you choose different dates? different uh, integers. Can somebody choose 10, somebody five, somebody 100, somebody 1,000, like that. Let's see what we would all get. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, after the get date, after the integer, is that a multiple um, semi bracket? So this, the first, the first um, open and close bracket is yes. for the get date. Okay. You will see that the get date always has that. Okay. And then the last one, the third one, is to close up what was opened here. Oh. Can you see where the cursor is? Yes, please. Yeah. So if we execute this, what do we have? So... 20 days from now, the date will be 7th of December, 2023. The time will be 9, 30, 33, 37 seconds, 570 milliseconds. That is what we would have. Did somebody choose a different integer? If anybody chose a different integer, can you tell us what you got? No, I chose 1,500 and I got a 26th of December, 2027. 26th um, of December, 2027. Yes. Yeah. So you see how powerful this, this thing is. It can go to any length. It can go into the future, it can go into the past. And we will see soon how we can get into the past.
right. <clears throat> We can combine. Um, we can. We can. We the interval can vary, or our argument also can vary. Our argument can vary. Our interval is always. Um, yep. Inter increments can vary. Increments can vary. Interval can vary. So we can instead of using days. We can actually use let's let's do something. Let's let's do a few things. Let's do a few tricks here, right? Let's let's play around. Let's just play around. Today we are just playing. Week. We can use week. If we run this, we want to add 20 weeks onto. What we have this week. What when does that go to? When does that go to? Sorry. That takes us to 5th of April 2024. Instead of weeks, we can do months. Month, sorry. And that takes us to 17th of July, 2025. Instead of months, we can do years. So you see that one statement that we wrote can be manipulated in several forms to produce different results. Let's change this. Let's make this two, just two. Let's not go too far, right? So we are expecting something in 2025, right? Yeah, that is 17th of 11, 2025, at this time. And if you check your clocks, you would see that the time is 9, 9.34. If you check the clocks on your computers, the time is 9.34 when we run this. It gives us 2 milliseconds. In fact, it can give us 2 minutes. We can change this to minutes. What time is it now? Before we run it, somebody check the time and then we will see. So the time now on my computer says 9.35. If we run it, obviously the computer will be more accurate than us. It might be a few seconds ahead. It's what, 17th of November, 2023, time is 9.55. So 20 minutes, we are adding 20 minutes onto the time now, right? We can do this in seconds. It depends on what we are looking for. So when you, on your own, you can play around with this. So today, let's say, assume, let's assume today that we are just playing today. But this is, this is actually serious stuff. It's not, it's not play. If you are into data, you would use, you would need to know how to handle dates because you will be dealing with dates a lot. Let's look at date diff. Who can tell me what this would do? 
Or who can tell us what this would do? Pass forward. Um, Adam? F, F, was it? I don't know. That's diff, 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 diff. Oh, that should give you a hint. Difference, difference. yeah. Difference. Yeah, difference. yeah. I said it D. I was yeah. just difference. Saying F. Difference between two dates. Yes, yes, yes. Difference between two dates. So assuming you want to find the um uh length of service of your employees from this date to that date. How how um when this person joined us now, uh this person joined us 10 years ago and is leaving and yeah, we want to do their living do. We want to find how many years, how many days, how many seconds. They have been with the business. We can we can find that easily. We can use that to find that easily. In fact, you can use that to find the number of days you have lived on this earth. You can use it to find the number of seconds that you have lived on this earth. And we shall see examples of that in a bit. So that's this. This also takes three arguments. <clears throat> it also requires three arguments. Interval. Instead of increments, we would rather have a starting date. And an ending date. takes three arguments. How does this look like? Almost the same thing as as um, date add. Only with slight differences. So here too we select date diff We can do it in days, just like before. We don't write days, we write day. The interval is day, a day, a week, week, month. We don't, the S, it doesn't, it doesn't take the S. So day, the start date. Um, somebody to give us a start date. First of September. First of September, which year? 2003. 2003. First of September. That's the start date to which um, year? Okay, let's, for simplicity's sake, Let's just do today. There is there is an error here. I will see if anybody would spot that error. <coughs> Let's see if anyone would spot that error. Let's run it. There is an error. Let's run it though. You didn't put difference in the end part of get date. No, the different that's difference. From the beginning. So this is this is what it needs. It needs the, the interval, okay. which is day. It needs the start date and then the, it needs the end date. And this is the date. There is space, there is space between the there is space between the date and the uh day. Oh there's okay, no, that doesn't matter at all. There's no end date. End date. There's an end date. You said 
When is the end date? End date is get date. What is get date? Well, you said you're going to look for the difference between two dates. Yeah, but what is get date? Um, now. Like today's date. Get date is today. Okay. So these are two dates. This is the date start date, and this is today's date. Okay. Do you get that? Yes, of course. So get date is today. But like I said, there is an error here, and I'm hoping somebody finds it. Oh, it worked. Oops. It should it work. I'm surprised it's worked, but it's is it not, not correct. It's not correct. It's not correct. It is not correct at all. It's it's a miracle star. Pardon? It's a miracle star. No, no, it's not correct. This miracle answer here is not correct. correct. Yeah, this answer here is is very very wrong. Do you understand? It doesn't even mean anything. Now, so basically, from twenty to two thousand uh, two thousand and three to now, twenty twenty three is twenty years. That is less than ten thousand days, actually. But here we have forty three thousand. We are looking for days. So this is completely wrong. And the reason is that this is a string. So this needs to be in quotation marks. Now, if we run it, let's see what we get. Do you see what we got? This looks more like it. So somebody born on the 1st of September 2003 has only spent 7,382 days on earth. That's not much if you think about it, really. That's not much at all. Let's see how many weeks this would be. Let's see how many weeks this will be. All we do is change this to weeks. And run. And that's only 1,054 1, weeks. How many months is that? That is only 242 months for somebody who has lived for 20 years. Oh, no. And how many years is that? Twenty years, right? Sorry, somebody said I should call them when we are about to start. I forgot completely. Let me give them a call. Can I pause? Yes, please pause, please. Please. Right, so let's see. Um, can we make any use of this? Let me let me give us one small exercise. Everybody, everybody, do this place on your terminals. Work out your age. 
in days, weeks, and years. I don't need you to, I don't want you to tell me. I'll just give us two minutes to do that. Work out your age in days, weeks, months, and years on your terminal. And then if you have a, I, I don't want to know anybody's age, but if you have a child, we can use your child as an ex, your child's uh, data as an experiment. Anybody who would want to volunteer, but that would be after you have done your own. So try your own, let's see. Two minutes, everybody, please. Let's know if you finish. Anyone finished? Anyone finished with the, with one, at least one? It shouldn't take long. Anyone finish with at least one? Yes, I'm done with one. Yeah, look at okay, here. that's so. Did, which one did you do? Day, week, month, or year? I did for day. You did it for day, right? So now you know how many days you've lived on Earth. No, not even mine for my baby boy. For your baby boy, cool. That's good. That uh, I think that should be five hundred and eighty-two days. Okay, are you happy to? To share, we would anonymize the name. We wouldn't use the baby boy's name. Okay. For baby, are you happy to share his date of birth? His date of birth is April 14. Okay, so for baby, for baby KY, date of birth, D O B, April, April 14, 2022. April 14th, 2022. Yes. So we want to see how many days baby KY has been here with us. We can select all of these actually and just change. No, let me just take one. All we need to change here is the is the start date. So 2022, 2022, April is 04. 
and the 14th. Right? So that's all we do. So how many days is that? Am I correct in saying that your baby has been here with us 582 days? Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. So as you can see, you can calculate this in weeks, months, years. I I also did for my baby. You did for your baby? Ah, oh, you must be excited now, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, when I found out this the first time, I was so excited. I did it for the whole family. <laughs> it's so it's so interesting, honestly. It's very interesting. So if we do it for um for months, let's see. <clears throat> Fourteen. And let's do for month. Oh, for week, right? Week, week, week. It's three weeks. Not bad, not bad at all. Wait, three weeks. So you see, we can we can do we can we can do this for anybody, anywhere, any day, any time. We can do it for ourselves. We can do it for anybody. So try try to do it for your for all your children. And when is the date? When is the date of when is their birthday? You surprise them. Do you know how many days you've been here? Do you know how many weeks you've spent? You can actually surprise people with this. Even your colleagues at work, you can surprise them with with this kind of thing. So when is their birthday? You can just check it out. How many days they've, how many days, and then you can you can, you can make their cards based, make them cards based on the number of days, the number of weeks, that kind of thing. So that's a business idea for somebody, right? Okay. So now let's look at number four. Four and five are slightly similar. Let's part. As the name implies, date parts only gives us part of the date. It doesn't give us the full date like the other ones. So if we are looking for day, it would only give us day. If we are looking for month, it would only give us month. If we are looking for week, it would only give us a week. The year. Right. So this takes two arguments. Interval and date. The arguments are the interval and then the date. These are the arguments it will take. So, for example, let's look at today. What day is it today? Today is Friday, right? Yes. And this also gives a very, very interesting concept, which we will come to in a little while. It gives a very interesting concept. Date part select. Date part. Let's look at day and get date.
What day are we? We are looking for day, right? What What is get date? Again, can somebody tell us what get date is? Today's date. Today's date. So we are looking for the day of today's date, which is 17th. Does that make sense? We can look for the month of today's date. We can look for the month. And that gives us 11. We can look for the year of today's date. Twenty twenty three. So the re result in this case you would see is always an integer because remember when we were running these, as the um, system was prompting us, when it gets to the interval or the, when it any time it got to the date is it is said it's an integer so the day the month the year it comes it always comes as an integer right now let's look at date name Like I said earlier on, date name and date parts are quite similar. And that also takes two arguments. Sorry about that. I had some I had some interruptions here. Right. So it take it requires two arguments. It requires the uh, interval and then the the date. We would just take the same thing as that. This also gives us 17. The day is 17. How about if we were to make this? You see, when it says 17, the first time we got 17, I told you that there are similarities between these. But then there are also clear dif there are differences, actually. What if we were to make this weekday? If we were to make this weekday, what do we have? We have six, which is quite interesting. You know, remember when we started this date's part, date's name, I said there is an interesting concept here. It's quite an interesting concept. Interesting. And also can be confusing depending on who is running the query. Interesting yet confusing. So for some people, 
If you tell them that Friday, today is Friday, right? It's the sixth day of the week. That is pretty confusing for some people. If you say, and most people would say, um, what would we normally think uh, Friday is? How, what, what day of the week is Friday? Last day of the week. Pardon? Last day of the week. Last day. No, in terms of numbers. I'm not talking about working days now. The fifth day. The fifth day. But why have we gotten six? Because why have we gotten six? The concept from Sunday. The concept of? I mean, it's it, um, fire from Sunday. I, I didn't get you, please. I said maybe it started from Sunday. Maybe it started from Sunday. It's not maybe. It actually started from Sunday. It starts Sunday. on Sunday. Yeah, this yeah, counting here from started from Sunday, actually. So it's can Sunday. we manipulate this in such a way that the result is what we want? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. <clears throat> but before we get to that, let's run a few more and see something we can get this as month and that gives us the 11th month we can get this as year And that gives us what? Twenty twenty three, the same as we had there. But what? So what is the difference? So what is the big deal between these two? What is the difference? The difference is that whilst this one returns integers, this returns strings. I'm sure we all know the difference between integers and strings. So the date name here, see the name here is a string. So though we have 2023, 2023 shown here is not a number, it's a string. It's not an integer number, it's a string number. Right, and so with all the other ones. That is a major difference. And its use would come into play as we progress, as we work in our, uh, um, with databases, not today, but in future. Right, so to avoid confu confusion, let's go back to this one. And it can also affect some other things. Let's go back to this here, which we said is six Friday. Today is Friday, sixth day of the week. That is not right. How do we go around this? To go around this, what we do is we set the date first. We set the date that we want to start, where we want to start our counting from. Now, most people start counting from people. Uh, there are two main counts, either from Monday or Sunday. For the beginning, for the first year of the week. Right? So we can, for example, set... Dates first. Is equal to one. Set date first one. Now, when we set this first one, this references Monday. Right. 
Referent. References. Monday. If we run this code here, we get five. So we can make clear distinctions. If we want to have a six, uh, we can also have Sunday as the first day of the week. If we want to do that, we sets the date first to seven. And if we run this, we get our six back. Can you kindly explain, sorry, as simple as it is, but I think, uh, can you explain? Right. What it does so here? there are two main start dates here, Monday or Sunday. Right. Actually, let's. I, I think we should actually. I haven't done it before, but maybe we should experiment with a few other ones. Um, date first. Okay. Yeah. But mainly these two. Sunday, Monday or Sunday. Monday is set to one. Right. While Sunday is set to seven. So if you start counting from Monday as day one. Do you get that? You start counting from Monday as day one, today yeah. being Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That gives us the five, which we got here. Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. So having started counting Monday as day one, automatically Sunday becomes day what? Day seven. Yes. Do we get that? Yes. Sunday becomes the seven. So if we now, instead of, see, because it's already seven, if we set it as the first day of the week, if we set it as the first day of the week, then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday becomes six. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So let's see, how can we set Saturday? Let's try Saturday. Let's try Saturday, actually, let's try that. So if we set Monday as day one, then Saturday becomes day six, right? Let's see, let's see what, if we set this to six, that is a Saturday, what will, um, what will today be? If we set this to six, what will today be? Interesting, isn't it? So if we take Saturday as the first day of the week, then it means Friday is the seventh day. And if we take Saturday, Friday as the first day of the week, if Monday is if Monday is one, Friday will be five. So if we set this to five, so this is Saturday, right? Saturday. If we set this to five, referencing Friday. Set this to five, referencing Friday. Interesting, isn't it? This references Friday as the first day of the week. And that gives us Sunday. Now, um, oh, you know, I copied and pasted, so I've changed yeah. it now. Oh. Okay, is that okay? Mm -hmm. So Friday is the first day of the week here. So we satisfy everybody. We satisfy the Christians. We satisfy the Muslims. We satisfy everybody, actually. We can satisfy everybody. 
with this. Any questions? Any questions? Right. <clears throat> there are no questions. Let's make a bit of progress. There is something I want to, I told you we can go into the past. I'm not sure whether I should bring that up now, but. I'm not sure whether I should bring that up now, but if I want to, if I want to do that. I'll just copy I'll just copy this. Right, this is, so we finished with the main five main things, but I just want to bring this up, right? And then we will look at a few examples, and then that will be all for today. Who can tell me what this is? Right. <clears throat> this here is quite an important code for anyone who wants to work with inter date intervals. This small code here, as small as it is, is a very important code. Now, you would see from our previous executions, the previous um, queries that we, we executed, you would see that we had dates and time in all this code is important for two reasons there are certain times when we are finding differences between dates it really doesn't work simply because assuming you want to find um you see dates we start counting dates from midnight right we start count, sorry, we start counting time from midnight. But the date is for the day of that day. So assuming we want to be just specific about the day and we don't want the, the time, then the time can be an issue. So this small code here is used in stripping off dates is using stripping of the time from the dates 
At the same time, this code here references 19. It references first of uh, references. 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 0101-1900. So the zero here is actually this date. So this number here, 45,245, is the number of days from this date to today. Why do we go back this date? This is when uh, most database programming software go back to. So the, the start of really mean that that is when it started. Obviously, I don't think it started then. I don't I, I don't have the history, but I don't think it started then. I'm sure it started much, much later. But this is where, this is the date that um, data scientists have chosen to reference as the start date. Of what? In database oh. systems. So it's always given this value zero. Right, so this is the number of days from this year to today. So that is how many how many years now? Like, um, nineteen hundred twenty hundred and something. Is it? How many years? Is it twenty? How many years? One twenty three. Twenty twenty three, right? So that's about one hundred and twenty three years, isn't it? Yes. One hundred and twenty three years. Yeah, one hundred and twenty three years. And actually, we can if we were to put years here, it would come out one hundred and twenty three years. Remember, we did similar thing here. We did similar thing, thing here. Yeah. Date diff. If we do this, it will give us that with the date diff. So we can go back in time up to this date. Right. So why is this important? Like I said, it is important because it is usually used in stripping off the time factor from dates. Why do we need to strip off the time factor? Every date comes, every every um, electronic date would come with a time factor. So if you want to strip off the time factor, then you must start from when the counting of dates started up to the dates you are concerned with. And then you must take it back so it's like you take you take the dates from the time it started up to the time you are concerned with, take it back, subtract, add and subtract, and that strips off the the um the time factor from the date. I don't know if I have an example here to show you. Let me see if I put down an example. Do, 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 do. Right, okay, so let's see. Right, so let's let's run this and see.
If we run this code, now you see this here, day, um, this, this bit here gives This bit here gives us this date. Right? And so we said date add. And this date here is written as that. Am I making sense? This date here is written as that. So basically what we are saying is that we are finding the difference or we are adding, this This is the date diff. We are adding a day onto this date diff, which is that at, at this time. So we add and then we subtract. This is a sub subtraction and this is a, an addition I understand so if you add something what happens you've done nothing you you? It out. it's like you've added zero yes. to something but what effectively happens is that it strips off the time factor so if we were for example to run this there will be no, no time indicating it just gives us the day the month and the year it doesn't give us any time is that is that is that okay this becomes important if we are to run reports um, between two or more dates, it's it becomes quite important. But we'll look more into that moving forward. So just like before, we can change all of these to give um, weeks, months, years in that order. We can we can do all of that. I'll just copy all of this here and send to you so that you can practice with that. So we can do week, we can do months, we can do year. It will be the same thing. If we run this, it will give us the dates, what is going to happen here. So you see, this has given us the beginning of the week in this week. You see, this week started from when? Monday, 13th. Monday was 13th. Right? This one, if we run this here, it will give us from months, the beginning of the month. And if we run this here, it will start from the beginning of the year. So like I said, it is important when you want to run reports from one date, to another date. So you want to run a report from the beginning of the month or the beginning of the year to the end of the year. So this starts from 1st of January, 2023. Any questions so far? <clears throat> Right, so let's do one or two examples. I think I'll use my database now. I'll use my database to just run a few examples and then we would see. Um, assuming we want to find 
Assuming we told display the length of service of employees in the display length of service. Examples. So we want to display length of service of of um, employees in the in the business. So what are the two main dates we are looking for? What are the two main dates we are looking for? I had dates and then probably get dates. Pardon? Higher date and then probably get date. The what? Higher date and then probably get date. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. The higher date, they are start date. And then the day in question. The higher the, the start dates. That's that's beautiful, actually. That's very nice, very beautiful. So display length of service in years, months. You can do it in, in years. Service in years, months, etc. So we can write a simple code using what? Which of the five types would we use? Which of them would we use? Which of these would we use? Which is our main? Thing here. Date diff. Date diff. Date diff, yeah. Date diff is the main one. If we want to be simple, we can also add get dates to give us the today's date. But the date in question can actually be any date. Right? So <clears throat> date diff. Let's see. We can write a simple code here. Select. Let me use, yeah. So I'm, I'm in my um, SQL HR. I'm in my HR thing. So let me just use that. You see, all, all this, we've done all of this without using the database system. So we can actually run codes without actually using a database. Select <clears throat> start date. Start date. I wanted it to prompt me start date. Select start date. Then we want to use a date diff. Date diff. We want to do it first in years. Year, the start date, and get date. Where do we want to take this from? 
from employees. And that is what we get. If we like, we can actually give this a name. This is the number of years. Because we haven't given it a name, SQL decides to to call it anything. So if we if we run it again, this will now be years. See, we have chosen start date, select start date, but we didn't. So we need to we need to give this a name. It's now years. <clears throat> So some people have been there for 11 years, 10 years in that order. We can run this in days. We can run it in months. Doesn't matter at all. Let's do one more. Let's do just another one in, in days to see those who have really been in the business for long. Though it's the same result. The only thing that would change is that. So may I ask, is it compulsory to select the start date or just go straight to date date diff? Just to you get don't out. select the start date. Where are you starting from? Oh, I okay, I get your question. You uh so yes, you ask when you use the select statement, when you use select, you must select from um somewhere. Sorry. Right, and though we used it here in these places, we were not referencing a database. Okay, that's okay. But okay. here we are referencing a database. Do you get that? We are referencing the employee Thank table. You. Thank you, sir. No problem. So select that as days. And if we run this, that should give us that. So you see, initially, though some of them, they all showed 11, 11, 11 years. You see that there is a clear difference. Some people have been there longer than others. But originally, it gave, it gave everybody as being, a lot of people as being 11, 11, 11 years. But you can see clear differences as you um, narrow it, as you narrow down to uh, to detail, you would get differences. Any questions so far? There are a few more things. There are just like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things, and then we'll finish. Uh, Somebody said, "Ah." Uh. I said, "Wow." Oh no, we have we have almost finished. Now we are just playing, actually. So you see, like the first two. So why is it this? Some though that that one gave us eleven, eleven left for most of these. But you see that is some are more than some could be more than eleven years, right? Some could be more than eleven years. We can find it in exact years. We can find it in exact days, and we know the number of days that make a year. So when we find in days and divide, if we want to find in exact years, we find in days. And we divide by by what? By the years. Pardon? 
by 365 number of years exactly quick. exactly by 365.25 to calculate, calculate in exact years. So if we want to calculate it in exact years, we don't go by this because this rounds it up. We come here. And we have all of this, dates diff, start dates, get dates, all divided by 365.25 as years. You see a difference? The previous time we got 11, just 11, 11, 11 for all of this. 11, 11, 11. Right? <clears throat> Another important key word that we can use. You see, sometimes all these decimals can create problems but another important so another important keyword that we can use is the keyword called flow who knows what does what that does who knows the function of flow I think there is another one here. Ah, oh, no, let me copy from here instead. Okay, that's fine, no problem. Divided by 360, which one is, no, no, no. Okay, divided by 365.25, close that. Who knows the function of flow? Anybody, 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 anyone? Right, so what flow does is, you see all these decimals? Approximates them. Uh, approximates, not really. It doesn't. <clears throat> what it does, if it were to be approximating, then this will become what? 12, right? Oh, yes. And this would also be 12, but it doesn't do that. So flow, when you use the word, the keyword flow, you are telling the system that anyway it sees a decimal, it should neglect it completely. So if we run this, we get exactly what we got there. The opposite of flaw is seal. Let's see if seal would work, actually. I've not tried it, but let's see if it would work. Let's see if it would work. And the reason why I say let's see is because... They are not yet up to seal. Is it I E L? Let me see. It looks like I spelled it wrongly. E I L. Hmm. It doesn't recognize it actually. S-E-A-L. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, it's not spelled S-E-A-L. Seal in um in software is S-E-I-L. 
It's like you are spelling ceiling. Oh, okay. S E I L. S E I L. Yeah. It's not. It's, it. It didn't recognize it in this in the database. S E I L. It says it's not there. Seal is not a recognizable root. in function. S E I L. You're doing S. We are typing C. You are typing in S. Pardon. We are saying S, but we are typing E. Oh, I'm saying S, but I'm typing C. Oh, my days. It's C. Sorry, C-E-I-L. Well, eh? you see, when you're tired, that is what happens. I'm tired. Okay, so this, this is not going to work. That is why I thought as much, actually. So it's S. No, no, it's not S. It's not S. I'm not even going to try that at all. It's not S. Right. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? There are no questions, then that brings us to the end of today's lecture. But if there are any questions, then let's have it. How many more classes do we have for this SQL? Um, I was told maybe one. Wow. SQL is quite large. We can't cover everything. It's, it's huge. It's big. It's my first class for me. Pardon? So we are just touching on those important aspects that you are likely to, to meet. Another thing that you are likely to meet is string handling. And for those who may go into... Um, Database admin, maybe data types. In in, in SQL, there are quite there are quite a lot of data types. Um, Sorry, there's something people say stored procedures. Can you just tell me what it means? Because I always hear it a lot. Yes. Yeah, so, for example, you have a database, right? You remember when we were doing um, the dates in, let me see. Let me see where I mentioned, I mentioned, I actually said something related to that. Yeah, when we, when we were doing this, employees select from employees where start date is get date. Or start date is in future. Or so that basically what that does is that it's a code actually, which you periodically run. And what happens is that it updates your dates. So you set it to update. So if, for example, um, you have a database with uh, with data that is quite old, but maybe because you're using it for a purpose like training, right? You want to continually have something like be able to show like um, employees that are in employment today. You see, when we got here, I couldn't show you any, any employees that are in employment today. Because in the system, there is no employee that is in employment today. There is no employee that is in employment today. Do you get that? Yes. But if I had that procedure and run it based on certain criteria, I could move all these dates forward by certain specific 
amounts such that every time I could have dates, I could even have dates in future. So like when we got here and I said, where get start date is greater than get date. Now, greater than get date is a date in the future. So a date greater than today, right? So if I had that code, for example, and I were to run it, it could create, it could change or update some of the dates in the database so that if I were to run this, I could possibly, depending on the criteria that I've used, change some of these dates to future dates. So assuming I have set it such like that, I have told the system to update this, all the dates by 15 years, right? If I update this by 15 years, you see automatically that this becomes what? 2027. Is that, is that, is that okay? Do you see that? Hello, who has the question? Yes, I did. Okay, so do you understand where I'm coming from? Yes. Yeah, so that is what that does. Okay. No problem, sir. thank you. So it's using updating the database, basically, based on a, a number of criteria. Yeah. It's a long, it can be a very long code all wrapped in one. You, you wouldn't be needing that you wouldn't be needing that at this stage until you are really really into database right at this stage we are just touching on the fundamentals sorry sir i have a question sir pardon i have a question okay yes it's come back from abuja to closer to lagos so i didn't get that you are too far away I understand. You say your computer volume, yes, your I laptop volume. I, I don't really understand. I'm only, I'm only, I'm only pulling your legs. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. So it, it's about okay. Based on what we have been doing, okay, select and then more like we filter out where this and this, and then we we get a database or or a should I call it a table extracted from the database? How do we okay? If for example we have now gotten this that we have on the screen. And yeah, now is breaking. I can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. This table that we have, if we now want to extract it and then I work on, on it or with it, perhaps maybe on Power BI, how do we go about this since we have extracted this from the database, the one that we have on the screen right now? I think there are there are tabs here to extract. Um, you can download as Excel, then you can now input into your Power, Power BI via Excel. I think that there's the result icon. Then we we'll click on it. One can download from there. Okay, okay. I get the question you're asking. I'm looking for the tab to show you. I can download the results. So you can results to file. Okay. Okay, so this is what you use results to file the so you can save this and then you can um load it into Power BI. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Shibari, thank you very much. Adini, thank you very much for asking your question. Okay, I can't see the screen again. Pardon? We can't see the screen again, or is it me? You can see my screen. Yes. Yeah. I haven't changed. I haven't moved at all. I'm still where I have always been. 
I can see a screen. You can see. I can see it again. I can see it. I can see it. I see it. Uh -huh. You see, I haven't moved. I haven't changed anything at all. But what if we click on the right? This this results tab. There's on the right side. There's one this something. One? No, no, no. There's a the result. Where the okay, this is covering my my is covering just part of mine. Just below hundred percent. Below hundred percent, yes. Pardon? Below hundred percent. Below the hundred percent. Just below it. Below hundred percent. You know the sheet that you are working on the the query sheet. You know we have one hundred and. Okay, okay, okay. Here. Yes. Below it, below it. Just that result. Okay. Can we right click? I think there's a way to download from there also. No, it wouldn't. It, it doesn't write. It doesn't work. It is not. Um... I know that's where I I do my phone. That's fine. Just looking for that voice to. Yeah, try that and let's see, okay? Try it and let's see. Try this one. Results to file, and then we would, and then if you save it, works, see yeah. if it would work. You can you can see if you can load it to Power BI. Power BI. Okay, thank you. Generally, I think the languages are the same, kind of, because this you mean just like this one in Power BI, right? Yeah, DAX, DAX in Power BI, time intelligence, and all those things. They, they kind of look alike. Okay. Because I just imagine this is a raw data that is connected to a Power BI. Then in DAX, one can start doing all these things before visualization. So it's all good. Thank you very much for your time. Sir. You're welcome. So maybe next, I'm not sure. I, okay, um, we 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 will we will sort something out for the remainder of the time. Okay, we'll sort something out. Thank you, Mr. Godwin. Yep. Any more questions? There are no more questions. Let's call it a day, and then I would see you sometime next week. If Kemi is on the call, Kemi, you want